greetings everyone Welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel and in this video we have a big project I've been wanting to do this for probably a year but I've never got around to it until now this is a realistic SCT-29 cassette deck and uh, in this video I am doing a couple projects one I'm going to try to fix the mechanism because it slips it doesn't fast forward or rewind and I'm also in the background stages of designing a new amplifier for my room and I'm trying to figure out I want it to have power meters however the LM39 15 and 16 chips which were the go-to have been long since discontinued then I realized I have three tape decks and they all have level meters so I'm gonna look at their circuits and see how they work maybe it's something I could copy into my own circuit but um, the issue with this deck is you see if we start it it fast forwards slowly it rewinds slower this deck also does have the ASMS system which means if you're hitting if you're playing and you fast forward it'll fast forward and it'll stop when it comes to silent part the only issue is I don't know how well you can see it but it slips too much to um, actually do that same thing with reverse you can't reverse while it's playing you can sometimes like here it's, it's reversing but slowly And then of course it fast forwards slowly. Oh my tape counter just reset. There's too much slippage and I don't want to play that long because this is all copyrighted. We'll try to reverse it again. It plays perfectly. There's no excessive Oh wow! Look at that. It it rewound until it found the blank spot. All right, so that works. So, um, what we're gonna do is first, I'm gonna check out the power meters because I think those are gonna be, a, or the level meters. That's gonna be a whole lot easier than um, trying to get into the tape deck mechanism, which takes up half of the chassis on that side. So, I also don't even remember. This is a Type Two Chrome tape. I don't even remember what's on here. All right, so here is the shop in the back. Here's our single drive motor. It's made by Sharp. I assume they were good for the time. This deck is from uh, 85, 86, I think. I'll have to look in the Radio Shack catalog. But here's our mechanism. I've watched lots of videos from Dave over 12 volt vids. So I'd assume this deck comes out in a similar fashion. But for now, this is what I'm after. Here's our display board, and it is, of course, driven by a pair of ICs. What these ICs are, I do not know. And I'm pretty sure you can't get them anymore today, like all the other audio uh, level driver chips I guess so I'm pretty sure how this board comes out is you have one screw and then some plastic clips and it comes out so I guess I better start this hmm I want to move the camera back this thing's in the way again Oh, this screw is in there tight. Okay, now it's coming out. I also obviously don't want to break the front, so I gotta be kind of careful. Now we need to redo, undo these uh, magnetic, or yeah, magnetic plastic clips here and try not to break it or the board in the process. I'm gonna have to have something to, not to pry it out, but just to hold it when I let go of the clip. Okay. Designs like this scare me. All right. Check that out. Our two chips are they're both made by Sharp, so yeah, you ain't gonna get these anymore. IR2E02. Ah. Let's head over to a uh, good old Google search. God, this chair is squeaky, and see what we get. 
Well, it's a seven LED display driver. Okay, I figured that much. I just thought of something. How are these seven when there's eight lights here? Then I remembered the your first two lights here, they're always on, so they're not actually being driven. Only these ones are. Huh. Sneaky, sneaky. Okay, data sheet doesn't matter. Point is, we know what the chips are. We can't get them anymore nowadays. So I can't copy this design from my own project. However, I will. Yeah, it's really hard to see with all the lights on, but the bottom first two lights are always on. Where's play? Oh, there's no tape in it. Since I'm sure someone's going to want to know, there's two Dolby chips inside this thing. Uh, it's Dolby B, and they're both NE646N. What I'm going to do, as a first step to clean it, is I'm going to run just a dry Q-tip along the uh, flywheel. And to make it super easier, I'm going to turn it on so it spins around while I'm doing so. This will probably get all the old grease and shit off of the flywheel and the belt that goes to the motor. Ugh, it's yellow. Grease has gotten onto this flywheel where the belt goes. How much more shit am I going to clean off this flywheel? Alright, so now I need to figure out how this thing comes apart. So we're going to get our tape out of here and set it over there. Ah, my front door does come off. One. And there's two. Aha. Maybe I can take that and clean it. So this whole assembly will probably go that way. Since the door's off, just how does it... Okay, so yeah, everything to remove it be back here because there's no visible screws on the front of the unit. That brings me to the million dollar question is how does it come out? Aha, I found the screws. They're pink too. Oop, oop, ooh, that could have been it badly. Into the parts tray you go. It's not working. Much better. I just noticed something. The whole front panel of this actually comes off, so it'd actually be a whole lot easier to uh, get the mechanism out if I take the front off. How does the front come off? Yep, it's literally just a couple screws on the bottom. Oh, I see more screws for our mechanism, I bet. All right. Oh, we're missing a screw there. That's nice. I never noticed that before. I want to take off the uh, spring for the uh, record switch. Exposure is as good as always. This right here. I have to take that spring off. Looks like there's just two screws holding the board here in the back. I should remove... Okay, get these out of here. I need to unscrew the RCA jacks in the back. I'm just noticing this one here. Okay. This thing feels like it's about to just fall apart. You can see the cover on the top is aluminum, yet the rest of the chassis is plastic. Oh, another screw in the corner. The wonders of old electronics. The more you tear them apart, the more screws you find. Oh, this is going to be difficult. The transformer doesn't. Oh, shit. There is shielding in the bottom of this. Okay, yes, yeah, so that transformer, that, no, that needs to go.
I don't know how I'm going to get it out because everything is soldered on. It's just got two screws. However, the screw in the bottom, how am I going to get to it? There's more shielding underneath the board. It's all in the recording and Dolby section. No, I don't want to open that. Got the transformer out. This will give me a little bit more room to... I'm still going to have to remove it more. So I can... I'm going to loosen this uh, strain relief for the power cord so hopefully I can feed some through. I don't really have much room to play with so I guess we're just going to flip this over here. So here's our shielding. This is just on the uh, record. So uh, two screws I removed did not actually hold the board and they held this in. I'm going to put those screws back in now because I will probably forget about them or put them in the wrong spot. Lucky me I had it on video which screws came out of these holes. So I need to remove these two screws here then the whole mechanism for the tape deck will probably come out then. I'm just looking over the board for some bad solder joints. I don't see any. As I said this unit works perfectly it just doesn't the, the belt slip. I think I'm going to have to cut some zip ties. Okay, let's take. Okay, so let's see this belt for the tape counter goes on to the right uh, spooly thing. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time remembering names of these things. Does this unplug? I hope this is a plug. Oh my god, it is. Is this a plug too? I don't know. Oh man, look at that. Oh shit, I gotta take this uh, record switch thing off. However, that comes out. Okay, I finally got the deck out. I had to, the hardest, I was out, I, I cut a bunch out. I was probably about 10 minutes trying to get the spring out. And the solution was so easy, I need to bash my head off the wall. Since the deck was already removed, just lift the thing up and the hook will pop out. And so, um, I'm going to get a rag. I'm going to clean some of this dust out. Set this to the side and we're going to bring the mechanism. And I can tell you right now, that mechanism weighs more than this entire unit does. Like, this is a chunky mechanism. <laughs> it's all steel. Shame you can't buy things like that today. I know there's a couple companies in China still manufacturing decent cassette decks, but... Keyword decent and they're all plastic and aluminum. But even if you were to manufacture the best deck in the world, Dolby is no longer licensing chips anymore. So unless you do like some people do and farm an old deck of all its guts, or use like dynamic noise reduction, which is the same thing that Tascam does in their new deck. I don't remember the model number. Okay, so here I have the uh, tape deck mechanism. A couple problems. One it's very dusty on the button, so I'm just going to take a Q-tip and, you know, wipe the dust off. The second problem is this ground wire here has broke off. However, it just attached right here. And so that's going to be extremely easy to reattach. I already got my iron on warming up. Since this is a ground solder lug attached to a massive plane of steel, essentially, it's probably going to take a bit of heat to reattach it. But that ground, I'm not sure what that ground goes to. It's either the uh, record or playback head. Our uh, pinch roller here is very shiny. I'm just going to do this. Maybe I can clean that a bit. Well, that really made a big difference. Okay, so our first issue is this ground wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re-strip it. Then uh, probably tin it. Then uh, stick it back on its lug. Oh god, this is that really fine wire that you can't do shit with. 
It's like 30 gauge. This is the kind of wire they use to mod game consoles with. I definitely need my uh, fine solder for this. What is this? 0.032 inch. So what I think I'm going to do with this wire is I think I'm going to wrap it around the uh, little pin that it went on. But for that I need my tweezers, which I still don't know where they went. There I go, kind of wrapped it around there. And now I'm going to uh, make sure that doesn't fly off. Solder it down. That's one issue solved. <clears throat> right, so to get into the belts, I'm pretty sure this back plate here just comes right off. Because all it does is just like sandwich some shit together. So out we come. Okay, that's a long screw. I don't like to push down too hard on this because it's pushing all the buttons down at once. I don't want it to jam or break something in this mechanism. Because if this thing breaks, I'm fucked. Because I have two other tape decks, but one is completely dead. And the other one, uh, the belts have turned to goo. And I don't really want to get involved with that. Ah. Yes, sir. It just lifts straight off. Okay. This belt feels good. Now, see, I forgot to show it on camera, but when you hit play, when you're playing and you hit fast forward or rewind, down in here you can see a couple rubber wheels. Okay, let's say the bottom of this pulley's got this other rotor on it. When you press rewind or play, there's another wheel with a rubber ring that clamps down on it. Well, when it clamps down, this wheel doesn't spin, it just slips. There's one for fast forward, one for reverse, and they both do the same thing. The worst thing I'll have to do is take this pulley off, however, I see no way in hell this pulley is coming off of here. Because I'm definitely not taking all this apart, there's no way. All this plastic's turned yellow and that scares me that it's going to shatter or start to chip away or some stupid shit like that. There's another pulley on the back of this uh, play spinny thingy. There's a drum that this gear, which is freely spinning, clamps down like this and turns it. So I'm going to clean this one's belt and try to clean that. Ugh. It's doing something. Well, after about a 20 minute break or so, watch a bit of YouTube. How I said this pulley wouldn't come off. Well, I'm apparently stupid because you just pull the thing up. And so, I have two belts here to the side. The longer one goes to the tape counter, and uh, well, the short one just comes off this pulley that I just took off. So, we're going to take off this uh, big belt. I don't know exactly what I would call it. I don't know if this is good. For, I mean, the belt is kind of stretchy. Then we just. Right. And so this capstan shaft here is connected directly to this flywheel. But it's got this little, uh, kind of like a bearing on it that holds it, but it just pulls off. Definitely stick this on the magnetic parts tray. Oh, it's not magnetic. That's wonderful. Then we just pull it out. So now I can show you guys earlier what I was trying to describe. Let's come back into a close shot. So when you're in play mode, and you hit fast forward and rewind, these two gears, or eh, let's just call them gears, with the rubber belt around them, clamps down on this outside ring. And when you do that, they just, they just slide. They don't bite. Now, some rubber renew would probably fix this, 
But I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm just going to um, wipe down this thing. Wipe down those two uh, rubber wheels, I guess. This is heavy. This is like straight aluminum. Probably is. But we'll wipe them down. And um, you can maybe put it back together and see if it'll work. Because, oh, and I also, the automatic music search that auto goes, when you fast forward rewind, it auto goes back to play. It's this. When the circuit, I'm not sure which part, detects the silence in the, in the audio, it trips this, which takes it out of fast forward and rewind, and starts playing again. This thing's actually fairly clean. There's not much coming off of it. Our little belt wheels, though, will probably be a different story. Well, after spending the last couple of minutes cleaning away at this stuff, there is actually no more belts inside this thing. So I am going to go ahead and start to reassemble it. Maybe I'll drop some new grease on these gears. All these gears have just dried up. There's no grease anywhere inside this thing at all. It's probably not good for it. So that slides there. Remember that little barrier washer spacer goes right here. If I can find a screwdriver, I can use that and just make sure it's all the way seated. We're going to get our big belt, the one around the flywheel. I'm going to stick this back on somehow. Shorter belt went here. Oops. Stick it in play and spin the wheel around. There we go. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the chassis back up here, connect our two plugs, and see if it plays properly now. Okay, so I got the deck just plugged in and it's just sitting here. So, um, oh. Ow, that was a loud pop. I got my test amp ran here. We're going to turn the uh, machine on. Now remember, the motor will start to spin. Oh, Jesus Christ. The uh, flywheel is scraping against the power transformer. But, it is spinning. Well, I guess there's no reason why a tape deck wouldn't work on its side. Let's see what happens if we hit play. It plays. Now we fast forward, it should stop like instantly because it's not going to hear anything. Which it does. Okay, so play. Now let's see if we can fast forward and um, watch that uh, solenoid work. This right here. Oh, not even playing. What is this for? Oh, because it thinks we're at the end of a tape. It's dusty. I need to clean the heads off too. Play. Are we on? Okay. We're not on. Alright, right, now let's see if it'll fast forward and stop at the next song and not stop because it's slipping. I need to pause it. Because I don't remember which button was fast forward and rewind. I've actually been hitting the rewind button this whole time, not fast forward. I feel fucking stupid. It won't stay in fast forward, it just immediately pops back out. 
So that makes me think that something's not right. Will it rewind? Nope, it just instantly goes back like it won't even stay down. That's not right. I'm pretty sure we're at the end of side A. We are. Let's flip it. This is so difficult. The big ass belt that goes around the flywheel is about to come off. If it wasn't for this power transformer, I could move this thing out of the way. Let's do the uh, fast forward, see if it stops at the next song. Oh, I think the belt came off. It did. See, me holding it at the angle is what's doing it. See, and holding it down, because it's only held in with this washer, so this flywheel is doing this, where it keeps sliding off. Well, there's no one saying that a tape deck won't work sideways. There's no one there to rage. All right, we're fast forwarding. Let's see if it stops at a uh, next song. Hey, look, it's fast. It's not slipping anymore. Yes, sir. It stops at the end. Ha <laughs> ha. You can tell the uh, mechanism was definitely slipping because in this tape I recorded on this deck about a year ago, if you listen carefully to what it's playing, it's actually playing quite slow and I figure that's because it was recording slow when it had to pull around this much tape. So um, I think... Well, I think I'm, I'm just going to keep playing with this because I want to know what's on the rest of this tape. But then I need to figure out how am I going to put it back together.